This is Drom Shekasuto. Few times in my um, in my life, I thought to myself that um, like in certain in, in a few situations, it it happened to me that I was so sure that I was doing the right thing. I really felt it, like I I knew it that I'm doing the right thing. But um, like after a while, I came to that uh, understanding that I was 100% um, wrong. And like we're very scared to come to those places because usually a person is willing to succeed and to do good and to achieve certain things. And it's not like we, ha we have hundreds of years and millions of dollars to, to spend and to waste in that journey. <laughs> Everyone feels that uh, he's under a certain limit of power, of strength, of time. Things he wants to achieve needs to take place in life. And this question is... is bothering many people how how I'm not going to make mistake with my life with my choices how I'm going to know that that person is my true soulmate how I'm going to know like she looks great she sounds amazing good family he looks perfect and they like honorable nice family polite family how will you know how will I know if I should take that place, should rent that house, should buy a house, like huge decisions, choose a school for children, choose a profession for life, to work, like whatever, making Aliyah, going to live in the Holy Land of Israel, not large questions, heavyweight questions. And the person is standing in a place that he does not have the answer. Like, he can go and consult with professionals, with elder people, with people with life experience, and they also might be wrong. And it happened many times that people that we try to lean on, to count on, messed up, failed big time sometimes. And so, like we said, many times in life the person can make mistakes and he doesn't really know how to secure himself, to protect himself from failures, from mistakes, from wrong decisions. And we know that the Torah is telling us that Hashem will be there with us, that the Creator, He will support our destiny, He will save us, if we'll call Him, He will answer. But in reality, not trying to say anything bad, just being honest. Many times in life we hoped for salvation that did not show up yet. We were waiting, we were disappointed, we were hoping and it failed. We expected something good to happen and it didn't take place, didn't took place. And on and on and on. Many situations in life that we found ourselves hurt, offended, ashamed, disappointed, violated. And in all those situations, we don't want to lose our faith in the Creator. But we also don't want to give excuses for Him. It's not like we're trying to act religious and to pretend like it's all good and that's our goal. It's not our goal. We want the truth. We want to understand what really goes on here in this world. Like, how come if there is a creator and I'm calling him, he's not answering me? Like, if he's here and he told me that if I'll call him, he will answer, what's going on? Like, what's the game? Okay, so maybe I'm wrong. So how can I know? What should I fix? When I'm going to this rabbi, when I'm going to that teacher, when I'm watching this video, I'm not receiving the answers because... How do I know that I'm not receiving the answers? 
because I tried to follow certain advice for a long time and I was doing and I was keeping and I was observing and I was trying and I was putting all my heart to it, dedicated my mornings, dedicating my noons, dedicating my nights, trying again and again and again it failed. Again, I've been hurt. Again, I'm here standing and I'm not rich and I didn't buy that house and I'm not married to that person and I, I don't have that school and I can't afford tuition for those uh, schools and I'm not able to buy that car and with all those situations in life you realize that something is wrong. Now what is wrong? What is really going on here in this place in our life that is blocking us from the success of our lives? Because we do want to succeed and we do want to succeed in the right way, in a way that won't hurt us in the future, in a way that won't destroy all the hours and all, and all, and all the good things that, that we invested, that we worked on. Sometimes. Sometimes you need to connect yourself to reality. And in reality, we can see easily that things are not that simple as they seem. So we're asking ourselves, how can it be? Why, if people told us that if we will, let's say for an example, wake up early in the morning, that's an advice. It's written on Parashat Haman that people that woke up early in the morning went out and found the, the man, means their living, their parnasa, money, all their, their needs, out there very easily. So it's an advice, a known and famous advice, to wake up early in the morning and then you'll be wealthy, then you'll make money. I know people that are waking up in the middle of the night like to make a living and they're not covering their, their, their expenses. So how come? I'm keeping that advice and it doesn't work. So there is a advice that you should go to the mikveh and go and put your mind, your head under the water and the water of the mikveh will help you to purify your negative thoughts. And I know terrified people, people with illusions, people with, with wild, very crazy power of imagination, not healthy, that are going every day to the mikveh and it doesn't clean their minds. Like their mind is still filthy, they're still suffering from illusions. From, from impurities and they're going every day to the mikveh and it doesn't work and we all heard that Shabbat, keeping Shabbat bring peace to the house and I know families that are keeping Shabbat for generations and they don't have peace in their houses every Shabbos table is a mess and arguments and cursing and fights and, and who knows and whatever and horrible things takes place in that Shabbos table and like why we are keeping Shabbat and eating kosher, and giving miser, and giving charity, and learning Torah, and on and on and on. And living in the Holy Land of Israel, for sure an advice that doesn't work, doesn't work. So how come? How can it be? How can it be that a person will make those changes in his life, and he will assume that he's doing the right thing, and in the end of the day he will find himself empty-handed, disappointed and lost? How can it be? So, the main thing is still missing, and that's the heart. Avodah Shebalev. What does it mean? When a person is praying without an intention, without a pure heart, and soon we're going to discuss those concepts to understand what are we talking about, because we're not here to put down another theory, to give another speech. We're trying to find real advice that will strengthen us, that will help us to break through all those life challenges that blo are blocking us. We're trying to find a real solution for our life issues. So, when a person is praying without a heart, without a pure intention, that soon we're going to explain what does it mean to have a pure intention in your prayer, so then, his prayer is like a body without a soul. That's what it's written. Tfila belo kavana, kemo guf belo neshama. A prayer without intention is like a body without a soul. 
a body without a soul, it's not something you want to have around you. It's not something good. It's not something nice. It's something that you want to get rid of. You want to bury that. It's a, it's, it's a dead man. It's not something you're willing to have. So a prayer without a heart is also something you don't want to have. And it's written, Ezoi avodah zotfila, which is the work that you can do with your heart. That's prayer. The work that you should do with your heart means to dedicate your heart to something, it's to prayer. How you pray with your heart? Bechol levavecha, with all your heart, with both sides of your heart. Means that when a person is praying to the Creator, he should pray with all of his heart. Now, what does it mean with all of your heart? Of course, the first understanding that we have is to pray with all your power, to give whatever you have, all your heart, to dedicate your heart and to pray. Amazing, one thing. Another thing that we learned from Kriyat Shema is that we should love Hashem with both of our inclinations, both of our Yetzarim, with the good side of your heart and with the negative side of your heart. Means that when you pray, you don't need to pray only in a positive and inspiring way. Please Hashem, I want to be righteous. Please Hashem, I want to be pure. Please Hashem, I want to succeed. Please Hashem, I want to be holy. Please Hashem, I want this, I want that. Also when you go through your difficulties, also when you're down, also when you find yourself stuck with emotional issues, when you are destroyed, when you're sad, when you're depressed, when you're angry, when you're furious, you need to take that heart as well into Avodat Tfila. To work with that heart as well and to pray real prayers. Prayers that will express your feelings. The feelings that you hold in your heart, you need to express them in prayer in every situation. That is a complete Avodah of prayer. That you know that you can call the Creator from every situation in life and not only when you're high, not only when you're succeeding, not only when you're doing amazing, not only after you learn Torah. I met some people in my life journey that told me I cannot be observant, I cannot keep Shabbat, I cannot put filin. Like, okay, for what reason? Why aren't you able to do that, those things? Because I am still falling in this thing. Because I am not keeping Shabbat, so I cannot put filin. Because I'm not uh, guarding my eyes, so I don't want to learn Torah. Because I have, have tattoos, so I can't put filin on my arm. Like, people got those ideas somehow into their mind. And because of that, because of certain pressure, they feel that they are not worthy anymore. That they cannot succeed. That they cannot progress because they're stuck in certain things. But that is a 100% mistake that is coming to the person because of his lack of understanding of who he supposed to serve. Who is that one that you're praying to? The one that you're praying to is our Father of Mercy. Now the meaning, simple meaning of the word mercy is to give something to someone that is not worthy. Someone that does not supposed to receive that thing. Means even if you owe something, even if you lack of something, it doesn't change the unconditional love of the father to his child. Now when you come to pray, when you come to connect yourself to heaven, to the Creator, to the Almighty, and you come to stand in front of Him, you should know in front who you are standing. You should know, means you should understand his qualities. You should under understand his nature, his good will. Who is that one that you're approaching? Who is that one that you're asking, requesting from? He is that one that wants to give you all the things that will make you happy. He's that one that does not judge you at all. He's that one that loves you in unconditional love. Love with no limits. And when you're coming to stand in front of Him, you need to remind that to yourself. 
and not to hold yourself back with your prayers. And then you can pray the most honest prayer that will accept. Because when your prayer is still tied, is still limited, because you're too ashamed, you're too scared to ask, you're going to a billionaire's house and you knock on his door and you ask for change. Can you help me with money for the, the subway, for the train? Like I need, I need five dollars. Can you help me with ten dollars? Now you had an opportunity to ask for someone rich to help you to open a business, to, to invest in you, to believe in you, to open your eyes, to give you advice from his life experience. You have an opportunity. Now you go to speak to some, someone such a, so, so talented, so gifted, so blessed, and you're asking for the most tiny, tiniest thing in the world. Why to do that? When you go to the source of blessing, when you're standing in front of the Creator, you must wake up yourself first of all to understand that the fact that you are standing now in front of Him is by the power of His love to you. Hashem Sfatai Tiftach were saying, please the Creator, Father in Heaven, open my lips that my mouth will praise you means that we're reminding ourselves that if He won't give us the power to pray, we won't be able to pray. We won't find the right words ever. We won't be able to express our feelings. We won't find the right ways to please Him. And we won't have the ability to breathe, to talk, nothing. Without His Spirit inside of us, we cannot talk. We cannot say, we cannot think. We're losing our minds. So if he, and you find yourself, that he gave you the power to stand, here you are standing. Here you are in the middle of your Hidbodadut. You are talking in the middle of your individual prayer. You are able to express yourself somehow. When you see that, you should understand that the one that gave you the power to pray, to start your prayer, gave you that power with a certain intention that you will accomplish something through that prayer. That you will find that prayer useful, means successful in the end of the process. Or else He wouldn't send you, He wouldn't invest His power in you to go on that journey, even to open your mouth, even to start. Now people are falling because of their low self-esteem, because of the criticism, criticism that is so like out there in the world that everyone are negative and everyone are judgmental and everyone are cutting everyone else and themselves of course to pieces on every tiny mistake your kippah is a little bit aside already people have issues with you like how you park how you dress how you talk how you walk what are you carrying what are you holding which phone you have what to watch you're, you you're wearing like crazy life we're experiencing, like everyone are judging and everyone are blaming. And Why? Why all this craziness? This is the impurity of our generation. This is the Tum'at Met that everyone are judging and killing each other on nothing. This is Tum'at Met of our generation, that everyone are impure in that contamination of the dead and killing everyone else, including themselves, killing themselves and then others, judging and putting everyone on trial and, 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 and for no reason, for no reasonable reason, just killing everyone, executing, slaughtering, slicing, chopping each other to pieces. For what? Because of our impurity. Now when you want to purify yourself, the beginning of that is to do tshuva, how a person will purify himself, like the verse is saying, and Am Yisrael nig alin, Am Yisrael cannot be redeemed in no other way except of through tshuva, ela bi tshuva. And when they're doing tshuva, means confessing on their sins, miyad en nig alim, immediately they're being redeemed. Okay, so now, what's that process of tshuva? How are we going to do tshuva? Let's try to do tshuva. How you do tshuva? I regret on my horrible actions. Okay, I was a sinner. I made horrible things. Now I want to fix it. I want to do tshuva. How will, how will I do tshuva? How a person should do tshuva? So first of all, that thought of regret, of feeling bad about yourself, that's the first step of tshuva. 
the beginning of that process, of that purification, to bring down that forgiveness to yourself, is starting with the first step. The first step is the feeling of regret. That you are thinking, rethinking about your life, about your actions, about your situation that you just experienced, and you feel wrong about it, you feel bad about it. That feeling is supposed to bring you to the next step. If you will be stuck with that feeling, negative feeling of regret, you can go down to hell with that thought. You can go to the lowest places, judge yourself, hate yourself, blame yourself on your sins for the rest of your life without achieving no forgiveness, without finding no way to progress and to climb out of that filth, out of that swamp. The right way to climb out from that feeling of regret is to accept on yourself not to go to that place again. Okay, sounds great. I don't want to be angry anymore. I'm accepting on myself never to be angry anymore in my life. Like the best comedian in the world, right? Like I'm accepting on myself never to be sad ever again. Never to have any foreign thought. Never to be negative ever again. It's a joke. To say those words, it's to lie. And like you need to be so rude even to think, to imagine to yourself that you can really do that. Like you used to be angry, you were getting angry every day, several times every day, on every one of your children several times every day, on every person in the street. Like we just said, you're being judgmental and hard and angry and furious with no reason in every situation in, in, in so many times every day. Now you feel bad about it and you want to change it. So great, you feel bad about doing that. And now if you really need to accept on yourself not to do that, you're going to make yourself to be a liar. Because really in reality, you cannot do that. You cannot accept on yourself never to be sad, never to be angry ever again. It's not in your power to take that decision, to accept that thing on yourself. You're not able to do that. So what are we left with? We're left with the, the power to decide to work on that attribute, to work on ourselves. To accept on ourselves, to work on ourselves, that we will try to avoid anger. That we will try to help ourselves not to drown in sadness. That we will try to cheer ourselves up. That we will try to do things that will bring more happiness. That we will try to write notes to ourselves. That we will try to remind ourselves. That we will accept on ourselves to pray on me thou of anger every day of our lives to help ourselves to work on that. That's the only way that we can accept on ourselves to work on climbing out of our darkness. We don't have the power to redeem ourselves in a minute. Okay, that's it. I'm not angry anymore. You cannot do that. Even to claim that claim is, is a joke. We're not able to take that decision on ourselves. So for that, we can at least try to put as much effort as we can and to work on it for the rest of our lives until we're going to accomplish that. And that's the only way to accomplish and to complete your tshuva. So the way to do tshuva, it's to feel that regret and to express it with your mouth, means to pray. There is no other way to do tshuva except of through prayer. You feel that feeling that you want to fix something and now you need to confess. You need to explain in prayer, in your individual prayer. Talking to yourself and to your Creator. Telling Him, I feel bad about myself. I don't want to do that anymore. Please help me to succeed, to climb out of my challenges. That I won't fail, fail with my bad attributes. And that I won't hurt no one else ever again. And that's where you finish your tshuva process. Now you have been purified. Now, when a person is sinning, what that he is making, doing, creating for himself is that he is bringing darkness into his life. He is wrapping and surrounding himself with husks, with curtains that are blocking his life, 
When he's angry on a person, he's bringing, creating a wall, a certain separation between him to his friend. And now they cannot communicate anymore. Why they're not communicating? Because of the sin that is standing between them. And when you will do tshuva, from your side, you're going to remove that obstacle. You're going to remove that curtain from between you. And then you'll find a way to access him again, to communicate with him. You will find a way to apologize to him, to please him, to thank him, to talk to him, to find a way around the problem and coming again to a relationship with him. Why? Because you removed that darkness that was shading, that was blocking the light of your unity, of your friendship, because of your sin. A person that is sinning is blocking the light from his life. Now, it can be in relationship between people, and it can be also between you to Hashem, that a person that is violating the rules will make certain curtains that will block his faith, and then he won't recognize the light of heaven in his life. Means that he won't be able to recognize the private supervision and the kindness of the Creator on his life. Now, if he will do tshuva on that, if he will work on himself and will express his sorrow for sinning in front of heaven and will tell the Creator, listen, I regret, I didn't mean to disrespect you, I didn't want to violate your mitzvot, I want from now on to get stronger, suddenly the light of heaven will shine upon him in a way that suddenly he's going to recognize the loving kindness of the Creator on him. Now, sometimes a person is sinning not in front of another person and not in front of the Creator. He is sinning in front of himself. He is disrespecting himself. He is disappointing himself. And then he is blocking the light of his own soul from his awareness. And he cannot recognize his true self. And then you need to do tshuva between you to yourself. You need to stand in front of your mirror and to look at your eyes, at your own self, and to apologize to yourself on your low self-esteem. On the fact that you hurt yourself, that you damaged yourself, that you disappointed yourself, that you cheated yourself, that you didn't do the right thing for yourself, that you neglected yourself, that you forgot about yourself, that you ignored yourself. And those things can be so strong in the heart of a person that if he won't remove that inner darkness that is separating him from the light of his soul, he will be a lost person for the rest of his life that won't know and won't see the light of his true being. And that's a confused person that does not know who he is at all. And walking in the world lost and confused and with, 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 um, with identity issues that when he sees some people, so immediately he wants to join them and to become like them. And he sees other group of people and he says, oh, maybe I'll become like them. And many, many ballet tshuva are like that. People that want to be religious and doing it from the wrong reasons. Like we said, you find yourself that you're going to the mikveh, that you're keeping Shabbat, that you're eating kosher, that you're learning Torah, that you wake up early in the morning, and in the end of the day, you're still the same lost and confused person with no happiness, with no joy, with no satisfaction in life, but you're doing everything you wanted. Like, you wanted to go to the mikveh, and now you were going. You wanted to pray in a synagogue, and now you're praying. You wanted to keep Shabbat and now you're keeping. You wanted to eat kosher and now you're eating. Why in the world you're not happy? Because you're still lost in your own challenges. You're still confused and lost in your inner relationship with your inner connection to your soul. This is a challenge and this is a mission only for brave people. 
only for those ones that are willing to get into that storm, that are willing to break through the clouds of darkness, that are willing to get into the oceans of storms and, and waves that will hit you from every direction. This is a mission only for the strongest and most brave souls that are willing to find the inner truth, to live life of Pnimiyut, to find an inner connection to the Creator, to find their mission, to find themselves, to have real purpose in life. Because on all the other aspects, you can never know if you are fulfilling your obligation and if you're right. Means that in front of your friend, your friend can tell you, yes, I forgive you, yes, we're best buddies, but you don't know what really he's holding in his heart. Even in front of the Creator, like we said, you can stand and pray for hours, for years, and you can think to yourself that you're doing the right thing, and you don't really know what goes on in heaven. You don't know the complaints, and you don't know the issues, and you don't know the trials, and you don't know anything about anything in life until you're reaching your true self. Until you're coming back to reality and connecting yourself to the light of your soul. When you're connecting yourself to your soul in that moment, you start experiencing. You start feeling again. Because words of truth can be recognized through your heart. With your emotions, with your feelings. Only when you are reconnecting yourself to who you are, finding your real true identity, you can start feeling and experiencing things in life. Only when your soul is communicating with you, only when from within you feel the light of your soul and you stop ignoring it, you can start sensing the truth. Means that when you're lying, you recognize that you're lying. That when you're being lazy, you're recognizing that you were lazy. That when you're not honest, you can start realizing that you're not being honest right now. This is a result of an inner work, of an inner effort of yours to work on finding the light of your soul. The tshuva, the main tshuva of a person is to find himself, is to stop disappointing himself, is to work in the right and inner direction to find the true light of your soul and to be your own best friend, to support your destiny and to build yourself to become the person that you believe that you are, that you're willing to be, that you have faith in yourself that you could have been if you would, Give yourself another chance. If you would really do tshuva. To really do tshuva, it's to give yourself a chance. It's to give yourself another opportunity. It's to believe in the mercifulness, in the endless kindness of the Creator that is willing to give a second chance even to a murderer, even to a person that violated all the rules, that disappointed everyone around him, the Creator is willing to give you a chance. Like that he gave Cain an opportunity after killing Hevel. The Creator, he loves us an unconditional love. And in the moment that we're grabbing the truth, all doors are open for us. But when we are dropping it, and we are coming up with excuses and we're explaining why we are so poor and why we have to fail and why we cannot succeed. All those excuses are just the evidence that you haven't started your real process of tshuva. Because you're making up more illusions and you keep on sinning by pretending to be weak when the Almighty is standing and waiting for you 24-7 with no sleep to his eyes, standing and watching and guarding and hoping and protecting and defending and opening opportunities for you in every intersection and in every situation, for you to grab it with both hands and to climb on the highway and to start running and speeding up to an inner journey of finding the truth on your own. And then you'll find inspiration in the mikveh. And you'll find inspiration while learning Torah and while putting tefillin and covering your head. And you know what? 
when buying cucumbers in the grocery store, you'll find Hashem over there. You'll find Hashem in conversations with friends. You'll find Hashem when you're talking to yourself. When you're working, when you're slicing pizza in the pizza place, you'll find Hashem with you. When you're stuck in traffic, you're going to find Hashem sitting with you in the car. When you are in front of a big deal, you're going to find Hashem helping you over there. In every situation, you're going to recognize His godliness. Because you found the truth from within. Without finding an inner truth, even if you'll see the most clearest and brightest truth outside around you, you won't be 100% sure that you know if it's the truth or not. Before you bought the truth, before you found an inner truth, you can never know for sure that an outside truth is a real truth. But when you found an inner truth, you can define and recognize one truth from a lie. Because sometimes the lie is pretending to be the truth. Sometimes the devil and the evil inclination, the Yetzirah and the snake are pretending to be somewhere that they are not and trying to show themselves as godly and pure and holy. You have people that are pretending to be righteous rabbis. You have people that are pretending to be holy people and wearing masks and making shows and pretending to be who they are not because they are evil. And you have evil people that are pretending to be pure and righteous and they're destroying sensitive and delicate souls. And you cannot recognize them always. You know why? Because you're still allowing yourself to lie to yourself from within. So it's hard for you to catch a liar. But when you are dedicated to the truth and you're an honest person, no lie in the world will fool you. You will have such a nose, you'll have such sensitivity that you will catch it from a million options. You will know exactly what the real truth is and the world won't fool you anymore. Because you bought the truth from within. You dealed with your fears and you confronted them. You were fighting to find the real truth and you haven't backed off because of the difficulties and the challenges of life. For that a person should dedicate every day a certain time for a simple individual prayer conversation between you to yourself first of all. Ask yourself, how am I doing? Not how are you doing, how am I doing? What's going on with me? How am I? What am I doing? What's going on? Be your own best friend. Come back to your true self. And you'll find the inner answer to all of your questions. To talk to the Creator is the most simple thing in the world. You should just open your heart and talk to Him like you talk to your best friend. There is no higher level prayer than that. In the most simple way of them all, to talk to Him like you talk to your best friend. May the Creator accept and answer all of our honest prayers with love and mercy and endless love and endless love from Him to us. Amen. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.